Joining us to help us understand what's happening at Thermax, but also the broader industry, is MS Unikrishnan, MD and CEO at Thermax. Uh, good morning, Mr. Unikrishnan. Always a pleasure to speak to you. So thanks for joining us, sir. Uh, I guess, sir, my first question to you is, you know, the way the street seems to be reading the earnings of capital goods companies, including yours, uh, they are acknowledging the disappointment in revenue growth, but they're also seeming to acknowledge the uh, upside that you've seen in the order backlogs and the growth in the order backlog. Can you explain those two concepts to us? What's going on exactly on the revenue front and on the order front, sir? So, Ira, let me take on the revenue side first. Uh, the current quarter is an exception for the entire industry <clears throat> because uh, if you recall, at the end of June, the government of India has very clearly mentioned that uh, input tax credit will be available for another one more month or a grace period of 30 to 60 days for various industries except capital goods, which meant the entire month of July went for uh, most of us to reset with the new GST and regime. And to be precise, predominant part of the industry started billing only by third week of uh, July. And the larger companies could only start it by almost maybe towards end of July. So there was a virtual miss of, uh, I would say, month for majority of the companies. If GSTN were not to be there in the current quarter, maybe we would have been up in revenues by at least a 5 to 7 percent, as against a minus 6 percent, which uh, we have reported. Same is the case for everybody, barring maybe the construction-oriented engineering companies. That's the point number one. On the order intake side is, I am also seeing it across the country, <clears throat> in majority of the capital goods companies, we are seeing a minor uptick in the order intake. And I don't want to make a statement that things are totally turned around. But there are segments where the investments are happening without much of a difficulty. And this is a customer-facing industry, the consumer-facing industry, not much worried about uh, you know what's happening to the country, the growth prospects and the commodity prices, etc. And I'm also seeing some uh, positive movement in the cement industry. A uh, couple of new projects being announced, orders are uh, being placed, and also the waste heat recovery based uh, uh, captive power generation picking up in that particular industry. That's overall take to talk about. Uh, sir, on the order side, so basically you're su uh, suggesting that some of the consumer-focused industries like perhaps auto or maybe consumer goods are uh, there where capacity utilization numbers are higher, uh, perhaps in some cases above 90 percent. That's where the uh, inflows are coming in and cement seems to be one-offs, right? Some regional players are adding a little bit of capacity. That's correct, but uh, uh, I am also seeing a lot more of inquiries coming from the cement industry in anticipation of an improvement. But they are all looking forward to the government's uh, new uh, infrastructure push, which should certainly be benefiting both steel industry and civil industry. And normally, if they decide to put up a new capacity, it would take anywhere from maybe 28 to 36 months, which means a three-year period for a cement plant to be ready to commission. So that's why many of them are looking forward to a consistent growth in the road building of the country, with Bharat Mala coming in and uh, you know Mr. Gadkari committing almost 600,000 or 6 lakh crores of rupees for construction. So I think there is an uptick going to be happening in that industry. Apart from the ones that you mentioned about, I'm also seeing a good amount of movement in textile industry, alcohol, beverages. Pharma is also, despite whatever you guys may be worried about, uh, USFD and the kind of share price movement, many who have developed their uh, uh, intermediaries and uh, maybe out of uh, the patent regime are also looking forward to expanding the capacity because uh, Medical consumption in the country is really going up. And food processing is another industry where I'm seeing, irrespective of whatever is happening to anywhere, uh, anything to do with the economy, underweighted investment happening and many more new players getting into that. Some small-scale industry becoming medium and medium guys are becoming fairly large in investments. So that dairy industry, there are 10 projects uh, ongoing currently in the country. So like the way you mentioned about consumer-facing industry, Looking at the you know income generation happening and the growth happening at whatever level, people are investing in uh, creating new capacity. But it is not applicable to steel industry, it is not applicable to oil and gas, I mean, a power, just forget about it. So that's uh, infra-oriented, it's at a standstill, but other areas, there is there's a movement happening. Uh, good morning, Mr. Unikrishnan. This is Menika here. Uh, your order book is up 14%, the quarter gone by. Can you break that down for us into uh, what was the contribution of the domestic business, the international business? And in the domestic business, you bagged a big cement uh, order in the sense that a power plant and a cement company, uh, what percentage of your uh, domestic order book increase would just be that one order? See, uh, the Quarter our intake of orders for the group was around 1,397 crores, which is around 14% up. 
Of this, uh, uh, 692 has come from uh, domestic market and 705 has come from the international market. Domestic for a change has seen a growth of 20%. And like in the past four quarters, I had been seeing a stagnant or negative order intake uh, from the domestic market. But last quarter was a positive movement. The cement order that you're talking about, cement plant, is not from India. It is from uh, uh, UAE uh, for a captive power plant worth around, say, 280 crores for the entire group. So that is not something which has really moved my needle. Uh, I would say there had been an overall improvement in the order intake. And uh, almost, uh, you can see that my order booking is more from outside India than from India. Uh, 50 and odd percent, 51, 52 percent from outside India, and only uh, 48, 49 percent from India. And I'm really, I'm mean, uh, wondering as to our domain name was Thermax India earlier. We changed to Thermax Global only one year back. Maybe Providence is helping us to become a global company. I would say. And this growth in the global order book is it looking sustainable to you? Can it improve over the next few quarters? Can you share some outlook with us on that? Uh, there are two types of orders that we pick up, uh, Minka, in the, uh, the international business. One is the medium-sized uh, projects for boilers and captive power plants and air pollution control equipments, even water treatment plants. Uh, the project side uh, will be uh, chunky once in a while, but the standard products of my company, the way we have taken the initiative to set up a factory in Indonesia and have our subsidiaries created in the entire of Southeast Asia, it is bearing fruits. And with the oil prices firming up at above 50 and touching 60, uh, there is also a renewed confidence happening in the Middle Eastern market. I am seeing a movement in these two markets for the standard products of the company. So if we are going to talk about an outlook for the uh, uh, rest of the year, I am certainly expecting an improvement in my order intake in the international market on a yearly basis. Uh, I am also expecting something in the domestic market. Not that I am looking forward to domestic coming down, I am expecting a sustenance of what has happened in the current quarter for the next two hours. Uh, sir, you mentioned that your revenue numbers were hurt by the GST uh, situation. Uh, what are you hoping to close the year by in terms of revenue numbers? I think you did uh, 1,926 crores in the first half. That's compared to about 4,600 crores last year altogether. So this year, what do you think will be your total revenue by the time the year ends? I normally do not give a guidance, but let me be giving you a direction. Certainly, we will be better than the previous year because our order carry forward is far superior than the previous year. So uh, with all the glitches that may be there in the market related to multiple issues, uh, with orders on hand and customers uh, are ready to be taking deliveries and projects are moving smoothly, not too much of credit uh, issues in the market right now, I should be closing the year better than the previous year, both on top line and the bottom line on both counts. Uh, Mr. Oni Krishan, just bringing the conversation back to uh, the big picture for a minute. Uh, I know you're saying you're Thermax Global now, but we're hoping that in a couple of years you'll be back to Thermax India Plus Global. What's happening on the government front, sir? We keep hearing the government saying that we're pushing CapEx, we're pushing CapEx. Uh, you know, some of the PSUs are being pushed to uh, invest more. Is nothing coming in from there, sir? Uh, I am not seeing any movement in uh, any of them. Uh, let's say there are three sectors which they should have really spent money. Uh, first and foremost is defense sector. Uh, frankly speaking, orders are yet to be concluded. Investments are yet to be flowing in. And fundamentally, money is not started flowing from the government into companies' uh, coffers. Unless that happens, I won't say the movement is happening in that area. Second is railways, where a lot of talk had happened, but in reality, on the ground level, very little is translated into placement of orders. And third sector is uh, road building, where I need to be really appreciating that the government has concluded projects, and the way they are able to be pushing the construction on the ground level, I need to really appreciate things are happening in that area, which will have a trickle impact maybe in the coming year, both in cement and steel industry. And a lot more of construction also can happen, because once you've got newer roads constructed, you'll also have mini cities and anything coming in the array of the roads, the way it is seen anywhere in the world. So I would say a good time for uh, uh, cement and steel and also construction industry going forward. So what is your roadmap, sir, if you put all of these pieces together in terms of, uh, you know, the, uh, the CapEx cycle, uh, what is your sense of how it's going to play out over the next two, three years? Uh, it doesn't sound like there's going to be even an early FY19 recovery, right? I would say across the board recovery, the way we've seen in, say, between 2004 to 2009, I'm not expecting it to be happening, but selectively, like Simon, I mentioned about there be investment happening. And for a change, 
most of the steel companies in india are already showing positive results and keep a couple of names outside uh, from there for various reasons uh, they are already talking about expansion and i'm quite happy to tell you that looking at an improvement in the steel industry coming forward sponge and industry started again reinvesting in the country so selectively uh, i would recommend that uh, uh, you could possibly project growth in the core sector not all of them in one time uh, the way it happened earlier it will be selectively happening quarter over quarter maybe from next year onwards but for us to catch back to a generic growth of commodity level i agree with you we are at least 2 to 3 years away from that yeah so uh, only krishna i you know a quick question on what the pricing pressure is like uh, in projects right now given that you said that the revival is very very nascent especially in the domestic market uh, what is it like is how how competitive is it right now uh, will you be able to protect margins i know you said that you will improve on both top line and bottom line uh, this year over next over last uh, by the time you end the year but uh, do you hope that profit margins will be protected margins will be protected in terms of percentage but that is with a lot of difficulties and maybe a lot of work to be done there is terrific pressure in the market for it's a, a buyers market not a sellers market at all for anything that we are selling at this point of time and customers do have better choices available today global choices available even in the domestic market with the kind of uh, you know duty reduction which has happened in the country currently and the capacity is idling across the globe right from europe to maybe uh, you know japan to korea there are people who are coming into india at this point of time but the kind of innovative capabilities which are resting in good companies in india we are able to be resisting that but the margins are under pressure but that's a time when you got to utilize your ingenuity and innovation to ensure that you are able to come out with better solutions and at a cheaper price that's the way it is like if that's the only way if you have to be stagnant in our thinking and the actions are taken i'm sure margins will be coming down but we are protecting it only by our internal capabilities uh, sorry i'm not asking for guidance sir but can you give us a sense of how much lower let's say a standard contract would be by now uh, than a few years ago when things were looking much better just to give us a sense of what kind of pressure industry wide companies like yours are feeling on the the margin of the pricing front uh, on the pricing front i would say that uh, uh, prices have not improved on the you know top line if i were to sell the same product maybe a 5 year back and today the prices have only come down not gone up whereas the raw material price and various other issues have gone up including the labor charges uh, i would say a 200 to 300 basis point is a challenge for the entire capital goods industry right now which is what you will also recognize on the balance sheet of many companies those who are capabilities to challenge uh, you know uh, uh, on sort of international companies and the smaller companies nibbling you from the bottom they are able to retain the margins okay. so that's only way if you are stagnant in thinking and stagnant in your action cost reduction not done manpower rationalization not done you will have a reduction of 200 to 300 basis points not below that that's a kind of play that is uh, uh, going out in the market at this point of time okay uh, and, and can you also give me a, a percentage growth figure for what your international book will see in the coming quarters the next two quarters is that something you can is the pricing pressure much more uh, you know is is far less there uh, will you do you think you might be is that how you will make up for margins in some fashion given that you said you will be able to protect margins will that come from your international book Uh, not in the current year the uh, reason for that the indian rupee is uh, strengthened between 68 to 65 is almost equal to maybe a 5 and a half percentage uh, in a time period of we talk about 8 to 9 months if our rupee were to be remaining at 68 certainly we would have had a cost and price advantage in the international market whereas many of the currencies have weakened in the globe because of which uh, i would say that uh, Indian companies' ability to be getting a better margin in the international market is not as good as that it used to be earlier. So, of course, as an Indian action, we're talking about uh, rupee uh, weakening any further with the uh, oil prices rising up. But uh, unless otherwise the rupee weakens, uh, the possibility of anybody improving the margin, anybody who's exporting out of India may not be workable at this juncture. All right, uh, Mr. Oni Krishnan. Thank you so much. Uh, always a pleasure to speak to you. Appreciate you giving us a big picture and also a company-specific conversation there. That's uh, Thermax.